This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave Stevens. I am the cyber guy. Uh, welcome back. Uh, I've missed you. Uh, we had a break, had to come back. December's a busy month. With me here today, president of the ISC2 chapter in Hawaii, Jeff Melford. Thank you. Welcome, sir, my co-host today. Thanks for having We're me. We're going to be talking about uh, all kinds of stuff. Let's get started with uh, the title of the show, North Korea. North Korea. Again. Our favorite bad actor. <laughs> That's true. That's true. We call these uh, the people on the internet that do wrong things bad actors. Yeah, those are the people on the network that you're always looking for to try to stop. And North Korea is one of our favorites. Uh, why? Because they have unlimited time and unlimited resources to do whatever they want. Yeah, don't feed the citizens. Spend money on training bad actors. Exactly, right? And then you can... Because uh, there's, being... there's profit in that. And you can get Bitcoin. Yes. I, so they, <laughs> my God, they, the, the stuff they do. It now. The reason I bring this up is because uh, you know we get the warnings all the time from mm -hmm. the uh, U.S. Uh, uh, Cybersecurity Emergency Response Team or Computer Emergency Response right. Readiness Team. Sorry, mm -hmm. CERT and uh, and uh, Infraguard locally Infraguard. gives us these uh, warnings. And one of the ones that came out with a, a new North Korea attack. Now, uh, just so the audience knows, North Korea out there is, uh, I don't know what camera to put to. Where am I pointing to? North Korea is uh, known as Hidden Cobra to our intelligence community. So North Korea, Hidden Cobra came out with Bank Shot, which is, it's hard to explain. Do you want to help me try to explain to our audience what a inner proxy advanced persistent threat is? Uh, it uses obfuscation. <laughs> So you, you have a network, right? And they, they send you some malware. Mm -hmm. And you click on something, and it installs a proxy. A proxy somewhere on your network you know nothing about that has a passage in from the outside and usually has a passage to the outside mm -hmm. from the inside. So it's, it's a pivot point, right. but through your network. So they're using that proxy to obfuscate themselves or hide themselves yep. from illegal activity as they exit your network, right? They're using you as uh, the fingerprints mm -hmm. in the crime. And they don't just do it once, they do it multiple times. And every time they go from network to network, from proxy to proxy, that's one hop, right? right. A network yep. hop. Mm -hmm. And there might be some other routers and switches in between. So those are all hops. But the more hops you get between the criminal and the crime, mm -hmm. the harder it is to sure. find, forensically, the criminal. Yeah. And they, they're trying this. This is what's called bank shot. And it's also called an advanced persistent threat. Why don't you walk us through an advanced persistent threat, an APT? The, <laughs> <laughs> Complex are, topic. They are <laughs> long-lived threats that are very, very difficult to find. and. The they the bad actors have been upping their games. The you know in the old days you could look at phishing emails and find misspellings and stupid things like that. And nowadays they're getting a lot more sophisticated. They're finding different ways to uh, exfiltrate data. They're using Dropbox at times. Um, I think I heard that they were using LinkedIn uh, as a place where they could go to pick up the data that was exfiltrated by the malware that was written. The, the creativity is just absolutely amazing. And I wouldn't say we're defenseless. As, as co for companies, not as, but for the people on the street. And granted, they're not typically targets of bad actors, advanced persistent threats. They're more the um, target of criminals and, and whatnot. But one of the things I've been thinking about with North, uh, North Korea is, when are we going to strike back? Because at a certain point, you can't allow this to continue happening. So it, do we know be, that we have like an army. Do we know that we haven't, though? I, it's not like the US would attack and tell us, hey, guess what? We just attacked them. We don't, we're not going <laughs> to admit to what we do or do not have. Right, so we could but be, we have that ability. could be doing that now. Stuxnet. Stuxnet, yeah, but that was, we were can we explain that to the audience? Because they might not be up on Stuxnet. Stuxnet was um, supposedly written by the Israelis. Um, we had a hand in accomplishing the goal, but it went into, I can't remember, Iran? The Iraq. centrifuges on Iran's nuclear yeah. plant. And it, yeah. and it spun them up so that they all blew up. Right, spun and, them too fast. Right. Right, right. Unfortunately, 
it got into the wild, which is a, always a problem with these, these things. You cannot control them. They jump from network to network, and Stuxnet caused some, some difficulties for other people. Now, you bring up a really good point. So when we're talking about just um, you know, biomed, right? People want to know how to cure diseases, so they keep copies of the diseases, mm -hmm. samples, right. in secure areas. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk about you know, anthrax, right. which just happened to accidentally get mailed to a lab that didn't order it a few years ago. Right. So uh, a virulent copy of this, this, this anthrax mm -hmm. went to a lab that said, why are you sending us anthrax? Yeah. We're, we're not equipped for anthrax, and that's a problem, yeah. right? So the same thing happens when we stockpile uh, these viruses and these tools and these pieces of malware that have been created, it, the people NSA break tools. in. The NSA tools, right? And they get posted yep. by other bad actors on the internet, and then those tools get sold, and mm -hmm. they can use they can be used for first strike weapons against yeah. anybody, not just companies and people, but countries. And and mm -hmm. so Stuxnet, uh, Stuxnet, I think, showed us that a piece of computer malware can get into a motorized device, uh, PLC. Programmer uh, logic circuit or circuit logic, and um, and also SCADA controls, right. which which control things like hydraulics and doors and and uh, all the things that robots can do. And, and when power, malware power stations, and power stations and uh, water supplies, and water uh, grids, supplies. right? And uh, when when you talk about being able to knock out things like that with viruses, kind of scary. Mm -hmm. You know, we as humans, uh, I think, are inherently lazy. And we want everything done for us, so mm -hmm. we will work all day and night to automate something. Right. And to automate something, we also want to work from home. So we put it all on the internet. Yeah. And now we've kind of made our bed and we have to sleep in it. Mm -hmm. and, and North Korea knows that. And right. other bad actors who I won't name right now also know that. And we seem to just be ratcheting up the pressure on North Korea who can't get money, so the mm -hmm. way they get money is they go out and they steal, steal it. it. Yeah. And the, the internet is a perfect way to do this. So the last uh, suspect we had was the SWIFT network mm -hmm. on uh, between banks, right. how they move money back and forth. Uh, the, the latest theory from our intelligence community is that uh, North Korea hacked that stuck, or stuck SWIFT, Swift. And, uh, and made it so they took a few pennies out of every transaction. Mm -hmm. And they had uh, planned on getting almost a trillion dollars, but they only got 80 billion before the whole thing was shut down. Right. That's still a lot of money. Yeah, That's a lot of coin to, for a country that's not getting much money, and all of a sudden they got all this money. Uh, coincidentally, right after that, they started making really good missiles. Really good missiles and supposedly some payloads for them. Yeah, That makes me nervous mm -hmm. a little bit. Yep. Yeah, because uh, our anti-missile system, I think, is only 50% accurate. I heard 25, one out of four. Really? So I got to flip the coin twice yep. and, and pray. Yep. And wow, okay, well, uh, thank goodness Hawaii is a little blip in the middle of the Pacific. Yep. And uh, sorry, mainland. My, my wife. <laughs> You're the target. Asked me what we're going to do if a missile comes in and we keep a bottle of champagne in the refrigerator. Pop open the champagne, Pop go out to the, the porch, enjoy the sunrise, exactly. whatever's going on. Yeah. Because yeah. really, you're on an island. Sorry to say. Yeah. yeah a oh, very well defended island. True, from but most conventional possibly attacks. Possibly not from our missile not, defenses. Not a nuclear missile. I don't think that's going to be the first uh, the warfare, though. I mean, no. everyone's talking about cyber war. Yeah. And truly, it could be happening right now, and we could not know it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it could happen because of these advanced persistent threats. Yeah. Um, the, the worst ones are, of course, they enter your network. They place something there that they can use later. It's completely innocuous to yep. your sensors, so you don't pick it up until the time they activate it and it goes to work for you. It's yeah. like a sleeper agent mm -hmm. in all those old spy yeah. movies, right? Yeah. They just sit there waiting for you or scanning your network. Waiting to get network. the call. Yeah, to get the call, like uh, when, <laughs> when Charles Bronson gives you a call, right? Uh, right. right, right, oh, that was a great you movie. You are now active. <laughs> Destroy! And, and, and you can move, use multiple networks together mm -hmm. to, yeah. to perform something. So people like you and I who mm -hmm. do security, we're constantly scanning for what they call the signatures of these, these advanced signatures and, and the behaviors, right? As well. Both um, port access, right. uh, protocols, sig usage. Signatures often are a reactive way to deal with things because first somebody has to write the sign. First somebody has to identify the threat and find a way to um, usually a, a hash a numerical 
Let's value. explain that. That's a really good one. So we take like an EXE file, mm -hmm. the executable file that we know is malware, right. and we run an algorithm against it. And the result of that algorithm is called a hash, mm. which is a numerical sequence of like 256 bytes. Right. But it's unique to that particular right. executable file. So we can scan our network and do a hash algorithm mm -hmm. against every single file we encounter with an EXE right. on it. And if we match those two hashes, we know that is an advanced block persistent it. threat. We can block it, we right. can destroy it, we can isolate it, right? But that's, like you said, it's reactive. We have to know it's out there first, then create and, the signature. And for, a, for a company with intrusion detection systems and things like that, you have to subscribe to the feeds so that you get that intelligence, the threat intelligence. Describe that for us, for our audience again. So there are companies that are actively pursuing these threats and identifying them and creating the hashes and then pushing them out. You, you subscribe to a feed, pushing them out to companies. You uh, import them into your appliances, your devices, and they then use those. And those are still reactive, but they're usually pretty current they're much better than, well, I don't want to say better than antivirus. Some companies are pretty good about that. But the, but it's the still, whole thing is... If somebody in England gets it, and you're on the network, and you get the feed, you're ready for that signature mm -hmm. before it hits your network. So right. it's, it's better than nothing. Oh, it's way better it than nothing. It can't prevent what they call a zero day, which is the first time an attack happens and no one's seen it before, or right. no one's been able to, to identify it. Right? never been reported, never been patched. Never reported. So uh, this is not a zero day prevention, but it's better than nothing. And most of our systems, if you subscribe to their feed like Cisco, mm -hmm. it's automatic, it's yeah. applied, right? Yep. And so the very next sweep, that signature's added to that sweep, mm -hmm. so you're checking again. Uh, usually that doesn't even slow down your, your network. No. Yeah, it, it allows traffic to continue while it sweeps constantly. These kind of automated systems save our bacon in yeah, a lot of ways. I've, I've been working with, uh, with them a lot at this the new job and it all goes back to the defense in depth you cannot depend on any one device you need multiple ones mm -hmm. it's like at home i can use my antivirus but i also have a, a malware program and there are some things that one program finds that the other doesn't and that's why you have so defense you, you, in depth. security in layers defense mm -hmm. in depth so you have your perimeter fencing, you've got yep. your front door with a lock, you've got door inside, you got grandma upstairs with a shotgun. Yep. Everybody's playing a part, and if you get through one layer, there's another layer there's waiting another. for you, right? And sometimes that doesn't prevent the attack, but is it deterrent? Yeah, it depends on how, how badly they want. It's, it's like a thief breaking into your house. If you have lights on, a dog nearby, the doors are all locked, they're going to move on to an easier target, typically. Yeah, your neighbor who's on vacation, that like the garage vacation, door open. Look at all the newspapers yeah. on the porch. <laughs> the, the house is dark. They're, right. Typically, the thieves are going to go there. But you throw a bunch of defenses that they have to keep defeating. It really has to be worth their while. Which is why nation state attacks like Hidden Cobra can be so bad. Because you have all the defenses in the world, but they have all the time. All the resources to throw at. And all the resources to throw at. And, and people, I don't think, realize that if you're just one person, you might not think of yourself as a target, but if you work for a company and you have a position of some kind of authority in that company and you can do a key activity in that company, you might actually be a target. Mm -hmm. If someone wants to take down a power grid and you work at the power station sure. and you have access to the power grid controls through mm -hmm. your network account, you might be a good target because it's easier to get malware onto your personal laptop or your cell phone than it is to attack the power station Oh, very much. Yeah, you don't want to storm the front gates of the castle. Yeah. You go get the cook on the outside and have him smuggle you in the back door, right? That's well, the best way. And a lot of what we hear about the, um, the, the big things like the, the target breach is hackers trying to get inside a company. But more often than not, it's these phishing attempts that are succeeding, whether you're an individual or a company. Because once you click on that link, you've brought the malware in for them. You, you bypassed the security systems. Exactly right. You know, when we come back from the break, we're going to discuss the phishing attacks, mm -hmm. the difference between personal and corporate phishing attacks, Good. spear phishing, whaling, mm -hmm. and some of the new ones that the FBI just warned us about through yes. our U.S. CERT and InfraGuard. Yep. Okay, we're going to take a break, pay some bills. We'll be right back. Until then, stay safe. Hi guys, it's RB Kelly. I'm your host of Out of the Comfort Zone, where I find cool people with cool solutions to problems that all of us face. Now, the thing is, we're really cool, 
And I only invite really cool people, but the thing is, I think you're kind of cool too, so I think you should come and watch. That Thursdays at 11 a.m. here on OC16 Television with Think Tech Hawaii. I'm RB Kelly, host of Out of the Comfort Zone, and I will see you next Thursday. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial break. I know I did. It was highly entertaining. Uh, I'm Dave Stevens. I'm your host of the Cyber Underground. And we're going to change topics now. We were talking about Hidden Cobra, North Korea, and uh, Bankshot, the latest uh, North Korea uh, bad state actor. And now we're going to shift into some email scamming. Especially now during the holiday season, people are always victims of shopping scams. And a new one just came out as a warning from the FBI about three different shopping shipping mm -hmm. attempts yep. for phishing emails. Let's talk about that. Yep. You got the same warning I did, apparently. I haven't read it, oh, but okay. I did get it. <laughs> Came out uh, early this morning, I think, uh, yeah. or yesterday morning. And uh, it was apparently three different emails that they've identified that uh, get sent to people. And this is the time you're doing shopping. Mm -hmm. So almost everybody is getting something shipped right. to them or to somebody else. And uh, even UPS, I signed up for UPS. If someone's shipping something to me, I get notification. Mm -hmm. hey, it's going to be here in this little window of time. Right. Please be home because you have to sign for it because, you know, most of mine are alcohol, so i got to sign for it. <laughs> so an ID. <laughs> Hidden drunk, you know. Uh, and, and so I expect these emails anyway. Mm -hmm. So now I have to closely inspect them because all of them contain a link. Yeah. Click here to check on the status. Mm -hmm. And what can that do to us? That leads to very bad things. Describe some of the bad things some for us. Some of the bad things. Uh, keystroke loggers, maybe not as popular as some of the other malware, but if you want somebody to be able to tell everything that you type on your machine, when you're logging into various banking accounts, all that gets captured and sent back to the mothership. Mm. Um, malware of different types, the ransomware, of course, that we've heard so much now that's about. That's very popular now, yep. ransomware. So that was the WannaCry attack, which is now uh, being blamed on, Tom, is it Bozert? Uh, Homeland Security Advisor to President Trump has actually come out publicly and said, no, that was North Korea. Mm -hmm, we, right. we have evidence. The UK has provided evidence. We're not going to show you, of course, mm -hmm. but we have evidence, and so we need to believe. Right. But uh, that was apparently North Korea. And the funny thing about that WannaCry is uh, it was all ransomware, and mm -hmm. they all wanted you to pay a little bit of money right. to unlock your data. But it was like 300 bucks. Mm -hmm. So they only made maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 grand on the whole attack, but they got, you know, what, a couple of million computers in 150 different countries? Yeah, but that's just one variant. Just one the, variant. And ransomware. Could it be that they were just testing this out? Probably. And it, the distraction was, hey, it's a ransomware, but it really did take down the national health care system in the UK. Oh, yeah. The NHS, yeah. NHS, I can't even speak. Um, if that happens again, take over for me. The entity that controls. <laughs> right. The entity that controls the medical services in the UK pretty much got taken down, yeah. uh, mostly because they were running Windows 7. And Windows or Microsoft said, oh, we know this is coming, so we're going to patch this in advance. But they didn't do the end of life computers. So Windows 7 had already passed its prime, but NHS, NHS in the UK hadn't upgraded yet. Well, and remember what happened in China with all the should I call them bootleg machines, unregistered? Um, I think you can say that here. There's <laughs> the, the thing about the ransomware, to show what a threat it is, is that there are criminal organizations that have a help desk. <laughs> you can actually call them and say, the encryption key I bought from you doesn't work. And sometimes they'll actually help you get your data back. That's so That's funny. how much money, they're because they have a reputation to protect, right? They want people to know that if you pay us the ransom, we're going to give you your data back. Why, why is it the criminals have a better help desk system than AT&T? They get paid better. <laughs> must be it. It's not about the stock price. That's it's right. It's all, about, it's all about the customer giving them money. <laughs> so, the, so that shows how much money there's to be made by, by all these variants. But the thing that gets me is when WannaCry came out, Microsoft patched for that two months earlier. Yeah. 
the, the fact that people got hit by it as much, Microsoft used to have a really bad reputation for patches. Sometimes mm. patches would break things. Nowadays, it's not so much. Not so bad. And to me, it's a sucker bet not to do that. I mean, you can set it to automatic, and it'll take care of that. Granted, there are end-of-life operating systems. Like, if you've got a Windows XP system that's connected to the No more the patches internet, coming out, yeah. Why? Yeah, well, <laughs> why are you doing that? Well, it's, it's good to do that because if you do not pay attention, accidentally it happens to us all. We've only had a one cup of coffee in the morning, mm -hmm. and we click on that link and go, ah! Yep. But if you've patched your system, it's very likely that the ransomware will not get your computer. And if you have some defense in depth, Mm -hmm. But if you've already clicked on the link, unplugging the network cable is not going to do anything for that machine. No, it it's may protect everything. any right. other machines that you have in your house. Oh, because it spreads. Because it spreads. Because it spreads, yeah. Via the network. Right. But it, it boggles my mind. I work with some vendors that I say, when do you issue patches? As needed. Okay, how do you define as needed? Because Microsoft <laughs> puts out... At easily 10 security patches every patch Tuesday. Patch the Tuesday every month. Tuesday of that's every what month. It, that's patch Tuesday. Microsoft yeah. and, and Adobe is in the same day. They, yeah. they patch their stuff at the same time too. So I, I just, I look at these vendors and they say, well, you know, we look at them and we make a determination. And I'm looking at these vendors saying the determination is if it's hit mainstream media and everybody knows about WannaCry, then you say, ah, you know, maybe we should patch our, our, yes. our application or, or something. The Microsoft is ahead of the game, and you have to appreciate that. It and, is nice. And again, defense in depth will, will help with a lot of these things too. But the patching is, is one of the biggest. I think it's, it's no longer a decision about when you should apply it. It's always, I should apply that as soon as I can. Exactly. Um, I think, uh, unfortunately, there's some people that run applications so long on their network, custom applications, they need to have Internet Explorer 8 or 9, yeah. otherwise that web application it's fails. So they, they have to have SQL Server 2008, you know, for that mm -hmm. application to run. So they, they fail to update because they, they don't want to update their application. That costs a lot of money. <laughs> so you've got to make a decision, though, because if, especially if you're handling financial transactions, right. right? If you have credit card numbers, credit card companies will charge you, I think, 75 cents. If you got breached, mm -hmm. 75 cents for every credit card number that got taken off your network, X filled, right? One person can have multiple numbers, mm -hmm. and you're getting charged multiple times for each customer. And if you have a million customers, that's 75 cents. This is why one breach can wipe out a small business. And, and that's, that's the thing. What's the mentality that, you know, let's, let's bring in a contractor, somebody who knows this old stuff, and have them fix it for us? Yeah. Or do we take a risk that we, we hose our business and it, and it goes away? The one thing people can do for the ransomware is uh, how many people back up their systems? That's yeah. the only yeah. way to recover. Oh, unless you but if you're backing up, here's the, here's the thing. If you're backing up and you have like an external hard drive or something like that, unplug that. Unplug it. Don't leave that plugged <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, do not leave your backup drive plugged in. I think mine's actually plugged in right now. I'm a hypocrite. Don't do what I do. Uh, unplug that uh, drive, plug it on only when you do the backups. Because if you get hit with ransomware and your drive is plugged in, what happens? It's going to treat it just like a network drive, and it's going to encrypt that drive. Right. And, and then there goes your backup. Then your, there goes your backup. Um, thankfully, I don't think that can happen in the cloud. So if you have an automatic cloud backup, no, that's not going to happen. No. So the cloud vendors are, thank you. You God, they are really doing a good mm -hmm. job. Yeah. Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Azure, they've come way up to speed. They're following right. the, the new NIST rules for mm -hmm. the DOD, the 800-53 rules a lot of times, which is, if, if you go out there and do your research, that's a lot of uh, control checks to put on your network. Yeah. They handle Tempest controls and employment. Mm -hmm. They don't hire non-used citizens a lot of times. Yeah. It's a pretty serious security. And defense in depth. And, and it's, it's reasonably priced. Nearly everybody has somebody in their family that understands this. Yeah. Right. So that's not an excuse. You have automatic built-in tech support a lot of times. Exactly. As <laughs> they we might, both know. Yes. We're the tech support. But you know what? Everybody I have a 12-year-old person in my family who could probably do just as well with this cloud backup yeah. stuff. They understand it. Yeah. It's like they grew up with this stuff. It's just this magical. Oh, yeah, I know what that is. 
I had a friend who had his business on a thumb drive, and the thumb drive crashed. Oh. It couldn't be read. Oh. So he took it to a local company, and they took it apart. Oh. There are no moving parts. Yes. Yeah, There's a, no reason to take it apart. Just a circuit board. And, it, and a another, plug. Yeah. yeah. So he gave it to me, and I'd mess with it and tried to do some tricks, you know, some drive utilities and, and stuff. Yeah. And I said, okay, here's the deal. You're an Apple guy, right? Yeah. iCloud. Right. Yeah, yeah, iCloud. Comes automatically over and for, for dinner. Free, yeah. I'll set you guys up, and you won't have to ever worry about it again. Yeah. And if you, they give you a certain amount of storage for free, mm -hmm. but it, it's really inexpensive it for the is. next, uh, I think I pay 99 cents a month yeah. for, for my storage, and I get 50 gigabytes. I mean, <laughs> that's a heck of a lot of data. I mean, I got to go really way out of my way to put 50 gigabytes in the cloud, and I do some experimental stuff with uh, virtual machines. So, right. uh, you know, I've got a lot of data. But yeah, it's, it's a really good backup, and they keep it somewhat secure, and it's more mm -hmm. secure than my system. Yeah. And uh, I think people got to realize nothing's ever totally secure. Right. But they're more well, secure and, and than others. People will store their, their um, tax returns, um, pictures that, are, that mean a lot to them. And this, this is valuable. It, it may not rise to the value of company uh, uh, Coke secret recipe yeah. or things like that, but to these individuals, it's really important to them. So protect it. You know, that's, that's, let's change gears, and you've got a good segue here. What's the difference between attacking a person versus a corporation in an email phishing attack? I don't see one. They, you're, you're after individuals. Yeah. It's a psychological game it's, to you, see who's going to click, click on, click on, something, on a right? link. Right. Um, the goal's the same. It get malware or something on the computer. Um, maybe in a business, it's a little more aggressive malware. Um, designed to be a little more stealthy, maybe, but it's it's still the same idea. It's to get people to click a link. And I, my mother-in-law told me about 15 years ago that her internet was slow, and I thought to myself, she was an older woman, and yeah. I thought, what does she know from slow internet? Right. And my brother-in-law told me, he says, well, you know what happened is people got conditioned to a response time from the TV remote. Ah. When you use a TV remote, things happen immediately. So mm. when you are clicking around with your mouse, you expect that same kind of response time. And I thought, that's really... That's reasonable. Yeah. I can see that. So yeah. uh, people have to take some of the responsibility, protect yourself, the defense in depth, up, run your updates, make sure your antivirus software is being updated, the malware signatures for the malware product you're using, that gets updated as well. Um, Most and, of that is built into Microsoft, right? The take defense, a minute. The Defender, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's built in. Okay, we got to wrap it up, but let's go on a rant really quick. This will take 20 seconds, and we we're talking about uh, cell phones. And oh. I just told you I got caught in the whole <laughs> Apple iPhone battery right. scam. Right. And we're not yeah, encouraging I got you to update. Right. No, we're protecting the battery. <laughs> we're protecting the battery. Uh, so if you see this episode on the web, everybody, please go in there and comment. Tell us what you think about Apple now in lawsuits currently, already class action lawsuits filed in Chicago and a couple other places against Apple for slowing down phones, and they're calling it breach of contract yeah. because they didn't tell them, they didn't tell us, I had an iPhone 6 also, uh, that they were going to slow down the iPhone. So let us know what you think. We really want to know. And also... The point I was making with the mouse clicking is yeah. take a minute, look at an email, look at who it's from. Don't click right away. Hover over the link. See if it goes take to what time. you think it says. Right. Don't be in such a hurry. I still get fish from people I worked with 15 years ago who have hacked emails. They don't want to change their emails because they've had them forever. we got to come out on two weeks from now. Yes. Be back on the show. Let's do this again. Okay. All right? Sounds good. Thanks for being with us, everybody. More good news every time you watch. Okay, we'll see you next week on the Cyber Underground. Until then, stay safe.